So the the verdict came in uh, from the CBO, and now everything has changed, and the numbers are not pretty. In fact, on upon the release of these numbers, the best defense the White House could come up with is, well, the CBO report is a subject to misinterpretation. Is it? Is it? You know what's not subject to misinterpretation? Is the fact that this administration was lying to your face, looking you in the eye, and lying to your face in 2009 and 2010 as they crammed Obamacare down your throats. They did everything they could to obstruct anyone who stood in the way. Not just obstruct, destroy. And at the time, we talked about it extensively on this program and on our Fox uh, program. But since I don't own the rights to anything that I ever did on Fox, mistake number one, I can't show you any of that. But I can certainly show you everything that we did on this program every single day. You knew what was going on. Common sense told us that the federal takeover of one-sixth of the U.S. economy would be a very bad thing for this uh, country. And four years later, after it has become law, after they have still gutted this thing so the really bad effects don't hit yet, we are just beginning to feel how bad this thing is going to be. So now the nonpartisan CBO has confirmed our predictions and your predictions in this report. It backs up what we have said all along. It shows that um, it shows that we we were not the ones that were wrong. The media was a hack for this administration. They carried all the water. They carried all the water for George Soros and Media Matters. They did everything they could to try to discredit you from standing up and saying this would be bad. Everything they could to discredit us. And it is time to set the record straight. It backs up the fact that Obamacare will saddle our country with new deficits. Remember, it has to be deficit neutral. That's what the president said. That's a priority number one. I will not do it unless it's deficit neutral. It will kill American jobs. Remember, the president was saying it's not going to kill any jobs. It's going to create jobs. And we told you that it would force people to lose their health insurance. That was heresy. It was, it's doing now, according to the CBO, the exact opposite of what was promised. Remember this promise from June fifteenth, two 2009, from the president. It is a cost that will not. I repeat, will not add to our deficits. I've set down a rule for my staff, for my team, and I've said this to Congress. Health care reform must be and will be deficit neutral in the next decade. Now, there are already voices saying the numbers don't add up. They're wrong. Well, I guess those voices that said the numbers don't add up include the Congressional Budget Office. But now, five years later, here's what it says on page 111 of the new CBO report. Listen. CBO and JCT estimate that the ACA coverage provisions will result in a net cost to the federal government of $41 billion in 2014 and $1.487 trillion over the 2015 to 2024 period. So $1.5 trillion in the next nine years. $1.5 trillion added. We don't have the money. In other words, that's what it's going to add and, quote, But it is a cost that will not, I repeat, will not add to our deficits. Which one was lying? Which one was wrong? Which one are you listening to now? Progressives don't care about the promises then, and they don't care about their promises now. Case in point, how about Nancy Pelosi from February 25th, 2010? So this bill is not only about the health security of America, it's about jobs. In its life, it will create 4 million jobs, 400,000 jobs almost immediately. Hmm. Jobs, of, 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 again, in the healthcare industry, 
but in the entrepreneurial world as well. Okay, so uh, let's go to page 127 of last week's CBO report. It says this. CBO's updated estimate of the decrease in hours work translates to a reduction in full-time equivalent employment of about 2 million in 2017, rising to 2.5 million in 2024, compared with what would have occurred in the absence of the Affordable Care Act. So it's not going to add 4 million jobs, as Nancy Pelosi promised us. It's going to remove the equivalent of 2.5 million jobs from the economy. It's not like you're just going to lose your job and you'll find another one. It will remove 2.5 million jobs from the economy. Those jobs will not come back. From the very beginning, we knew the penalties associated with Obamacare, and we knew it would hurt the job market and not help it. You knew that. You're smart. Pat and I were having a conversation about something this morning, and I said, I stand with the founders. Trust the American people. Trust the audience. They are smart. They will figure it out. Show them the evidence, and they will come to the, to the correct conclusion. It is not our job to do anything but bring you the evidence and let you figure it out. Well, on page 124 of the report, the CBO states, quote, Businesses also may respond to the employer penalty by seeking to reduce or limit their full-time staffing and to hire more part-time employees. Okay, remember, we are being lambasted. We are a madman. We're a danger. We are terrorists. We are absolutely everything because we stood against the uh, Obamacare Act. I want to show you what Stu just read. Businesses may also respond to employer penalty by seeking to reduce or limit their full-time staffing or hire more part-time employees. That was wrong. That was a lie. When I said it, on July 15th, 2009, one tax on one small business costs between five and ten jobs. Think about that against the entire scale of the economy. You'll begin to see what this plan is going to cost in free health care. The higher the tax, the less people get hired. The more people need government to give them health care or housing. This is a freedom grab. But you don't need the CBO or me telling you what Obamacare was going to go do your do to your business or your job because you're smart. The president, the progressives in uh, Washington, and that means the Mitch McConnells as well. Um, they they don't trust you. I do. Why? Because I know you. I talk to you. You call us. I read your emails. Here just here's a handful of emails I read on the air July 16th 2009. Suzanne in uh, Florida says, "I'm a small business owner. If Obamacare passes, this would force me not to add anyone, which I had plans of hiring three more people in 2010. Plus, I may need to fire one to two other people. So this would be a total loss of five people. I know it doesn't seem like many, but they all add up, don't they? Scott in Pennsylvania writes, Glenn, I manage a 15-employee shop. Well, now, a seven-employee furniture, furniture manufacturing company in Pennsylvania. I admit I don't completely understand Obamacare, but does anyone, including Obama? But there is no way I can afford to pay health care or higher tax for health care. I am guessing the last seven of us will be gone if this goes through. I'm sure the Chinese are going to be happy to make all the products that we make now in Pennsylvania. Brett, he says, uh, we currently employ three people, expect to hire four to five new employees January 2010. However, if Obamacare goes through, we will not be able to afford to create but maybe one job. Additionally, my business partner and I may have to stop growing our company soon in order to avoid additional taxation. Um, Let's see. This comes from Nancy Glenn. We're a small business owner in South Florida. We have already let two of our employees go since January. 
If Obamacare goes through, I will have to lay off the remaining three employees and just have contract laborers. That's where we're headed, gang. That was back in 2009. But we're not done yet. You knew the truth. We knew the truth. The CBO now verifies that they were wrong about everything. And that's because they're not a bipartisan organization. They will do the bidding of whoever has power. The progressives have no idea how the free work market system even works. And the reason why I want to set this record straight is because the Huffington Post yesterday said, oh, you know what Glenn Beck should have talked about? He should have talked about more uniting principles. In fact, there should be a grassroots organization that maybe he could have even started that had some principles and values and it could have swept the country. Yeah, it did. You people in the press disgust me. You disgust me. How do you sleep at night? You won't print a word of this in context. It is important for the American people to know who they can trust. Because trust is at an all-time low. And I don't ever, ever, ever ask you for trust. Don't trust me. Do your own homework. And I want to show the press how out of touch they are. Because you did do your own homework. I'm showing you the evidence of not what I said. I'm showing the evidence of what you said in emails. You knew it. You knew we were being lied to. I want somebody to finally recognize the American people have been on to this for a long time. Trust yourself. Empower yourself. Don't you listen to the press. Don't you listen to the the government because they are wrong. And you know what? The government gets something out of it. The press has no excuse. They are lazy and ignorant.